Cinderella. So today we are creating a Cinderella cake with buttercream. This was so, so nerve wracking, but it turned out great. So let me show you how I did it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quali Pops. My name is Lily James and today we're creating a Cinderella cake with buttercream. 2022 is gonna be the year of buttercream and this was my first cake. I know the Boba Fett cake came out first, but that was just cause it was trending. But this was actually the cake I created before that to try and test and gauge how I felt about buttercream. My heart was racing when I started this cake. I was procrastinating so much because I was scared that it was gonna be a tragedy but it turned out to be so triumphant. So let's get into it. For this cake, I am using my PVC pipe system. I'm actually upgrading and improving this so it's more stable. But for now, this worked great. Now I'm starting with a cake that I baked in my doll cake pan. I actually only filled the pan halfway. I'm not creating a doll cake, but I really wanted that shape for my Cinderella dress. And so this was perfect because I wouldn't have to carve that much cake away. So I've got two layers of my doll cake and then I already carved a little bit of the top. I added a support system with a pipe coupler and then I added something I created. To make the bottom of Cinderella's face, I'm using a six inch half dome piece of styrofoam. I cut it in half, I'm using the bottom half and I covered it with food grade silicone. If you're gonna try and make this cake, you can totally take the styrofoam, cover it in saran wrap and then use that. But I figured that I'm gonna be making a ton of these cakes so I covered it in food grade silicone so that I can wash it and reuse it. So the styrofoam is gonna create half of my dome and I'm gonna be using half of a six inch dome cake to create the other half. We've got buttercream in between my layers and then I'm adding an eight inch round cake to the top. It's a little bit bigger than my six inch dome cake and it's gonna account for Cinderella's bangs. I think I'm missing video, hold on. Yeah, I'm missing video. <laughs> so we got the six inch half dome cake, we've got the eight inch round cake and on top of that, I have a four inch half dome cake to create Cinderella's bun, but I don't know where that footage is. You're gonna see it later on. <laughs> Once I had all of my cake stacked, it was time to sculpt. So I wanted her dress to be a little bit more flowy. So I'm carving away some of the caramelization and just adding some curves to the side. When I was happy with her dress, I started to work on Cinderella's bangs. And I'm going for the classic Cinderella, except I'm gonna try and make her a little bit more kawaii. And then I'm gonna start to round out the four inch half dome cake to create her bun. Ooh, I can't get over this color. This cake is beautiful. What flavor is this? Do you guys know? Can you guess? No, it's not cherry. Who, who guessed that? Why? It's not even, I don't know why you guessed that. It's a blueberry vanilla marble cake. Pretty good, huh? I put a little bit of sour cream in it. Oh, it's tasty. Now, after I finished carving, I added a crumb coat. Uh, the MVP of any cake is the crumb coat. You keep the crumbs off. The final layer of buttercream, the final layer of fondant. Homie, this would not be possible without you. Okay, I just want you to know that crumb coat. You're the real MVP. After my crumb coat, I put my cake in the fridge to set up, and then I started to add my final layer of buttercream. Now for her dress, I'm using this like Robin's egg blue. Is that what it's called? Ooh. I know that the original dress is like silver, but I fell in love with this color, so that's why I'm using it. And then I started to add buttercream to create her face. So we have this nice skin tone buttercream going on to the front. Once I added the buttercream to her face, I added some really nice golden blonde buttercream to create her do. Making sure that I highlight those three gorgeous bangs at the front. I moved my way towards the back and then worked on that nice bun. Once my cake was covered with buttercream, I put it back in the fridge took it out and really started to shape my cake. It was only when the buttercream had solidified that I could really start to smoothen out all of these rough edges. It took a lot of work, just slowly scraping little bits of buttercream to get these surfaces as flat as possible. If I were to do this with fondant, it would be flat already. It would have been done, but no, I'm doing this with buttercream, so it's like an extra 40 minutes <laughs> of just scraping buttercream off different parts of this cake. But you know what, it tastes better, so I'm fine with that. 
Now, when you're doing a lot of sculpting work with buttercream, sometimes it gets discolored. It has something to do with the food coloring and the buttercream softening. And so my dress actually looked a lot darker than I originally intended. Now to fix this and keep the texture, I thinned out my buttercream and used a paintbrush to brush on a very thin layer. That way I have the smooth texture, but I also have the original color that I wanted. I started with the dress and then I moved on to her hair. Once I was done with her like buttercream skincare routine, I started to add some fondant pieces. Now this cake is covered in buttercream, but I still want to emphasize that fondant is a really good tool for details. The buttercream isn't completely flat, there is still some texture. So adding these fondant details gives us a really polished look. It also makes it really easy to make arms and gloves and the like poofs on her sleeve. Having to do that with buttercream would have taken so much time, time that could be used for sleeping. Okay, if I can get a few more minutes of sleep, then I'm gonna use it to watch more Netflix. <laughs> oh, who needs sleep when you can just binge watch show after show, right? I'm all right. I just started Succession. I'm only two episodes into the first season and there's two more seasons that I need to watch. <laughs> now, after I finished her headband, I started to work on her face and this is where I messed up a lot. I'm excited to show you my screw up. I'm like so proud of it. So I added fondant to create her eyes. I added eyelashes, pupils, catch lights, and I thought I did a pretty good job. But after I finished adding her lips, I put my cake in the fridge, took a walk around the block. I looked at it again and I realized that I could do better. So this is where the buttercream plastic surgery comes in. I removed her fondant eyes, took out my skin tone colored buttercream and just applied more to her face. I gave her some fuller cheekbones, I gave her a chin, a really nice nose, put it back in the fridge, took it out, smoothened it out, did all of that good stuff. I reapplied her eyes, her pupils, added some cheek detail, her cat lights, and voila, my kawaii Cinderella cake covered in buttercream was complete. Doesn't that look better? That looks way better. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of this cake. Look at that, it looks like a toy. What, I would buy that. I would buy that on Wish. <laughs> or the Disney store, well, I don't know. Whoever has it cheaper. Oh my gosh, I just love how this turned out. It just looks stunning. I'm just Good job, you did a good job. Now the reason I'm so proud of this mistake is because it changed my opinion of buttercream. I was scared that with buttercream, I wouldn't be able to fix my mistakes and I was totally wrong. See, if I created this cake with fondant and I realized that she needed more volume in her cheeks, that she didn't have a nice chin, there would be no way to fix it. But with this cake, I was able to pull off her fondant details, add more buttercream to her cheeks, and it looks like there was no mistake at all. And so while I was kind of dreading this sort of adventure into the buttercream world, I'm like, I'm good, man. It's gonna be so much fun to create more kawaii characters, but also to expand to more realistic things. Yo, and you get to watch it? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm cutting this cake well, but all I can see is that paper towel mess I got on the side. What? Yo, you're on camera, homie. You couldn't clean up those paper towels before you started cutting this cake? What's up with that? And you didn't comb your hair? Um, you're not television ready. <laughs> now I'm curious, what other characters would you like to see me do in this style? What is my next buttercream experiment? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you so much. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Now my Cinderella cake is bomb, but this blueberry vanilla marble cake on the inside is where it's at. If I ever get married, this is gonna be my wedding cake. And I'm not even gonna share. I'm just going to buy Costco sheet cake for everybody else. And I'm just gonna keep this to myself. <laughs> I don't even care if they call me selfish. I'll take it, whatever. This, as long as I get to eat this whole cake. So I just wanted to take some time to acknowledge crumb coats. The unsung heroes of every cake. My cake looks bomb on the outside because you're holding in all of the nastiness. Hey, crumb coat. You're the real MVP. So here's a little honesty. When I finished my Cinderella cake, I thought her face was ugly. <laughs> I just didn't like the way it turned out. But luckily, I covered my cake in buttercream, so I was able to fix all of my mistakes. I gave her face a little bit more character. I added some voluptuousness to her cheeks. 
and boom, Cinderella 2.0 was complete. So for 2022, I'm gonna cover all of my cakes in buttercream and not fondant. It was scary up until I finished this cake. When I realized how easy it is to work with buttercream and how easy it is to fix your mistakes, I stopped fearing the change and just got really excited about all the things I'm gonna be creating. Starting with this Cinderella cake. 